Well, guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of the Hard Tongue Family Farms. And today, it's a fun day. You want to know why it's a fun day? We are heading southbound, southeast, actually, more technically. We're heading to the Nash Farm Machinery Show in Louisville, Kentucky. It's going to be fun. Love farm shows. Case just came out with a new combine, a lot of new products down there. We're going to have some interviews, we're going to see some friends, and we're going to meet some people. So I hope you guys stay tuned. We're going to drive down. we got a six-hour drive today. I'll be down there today and tomorrow. So I hope to run into you guys, or some of you guys, and uh, we'll see what we get down there. So see you guys this afternoon when we get into Louisville. Just made it to Louisville. We're checking in the hotel. They want to go check out the show for, show for about an hour or so. And they got the Patriot Patriot out. Nice. Always need to see the toy stuff. So guys, I'm only here for a day and a half, so I'm gonna try to get as much into this one video as possible. We're gonna get some interviews, we're gonna look at some new products, we're gonna see what all we see, so hope you guys enjoy this video. Just made it to the show and look what greets me. The new, brand new CR11. So it's New Holland's brand new combine, cases, same thing. 775 horsepower, 567 bushel grain tank, 5.8 bushel unload. This thing's a beast. 50 foot Macdon Draper on it. That's been out for a couple years. But brand new combine. I'm really kind of curious to see what the 775 horsepower, what that actually translates. Pretty dang cool guys. And then another cool thing is that all hay tools now have been uh, switched over to the New Holland branding starting in 24 or 25, I forget. Sweet. The only thing I don't like about it, that spout is hideous. Massive. Yes, yeah, so I believe all hay equipment is going to be going to this kind of branding. I don't know if they're still going to be called Case, but I read that in an announcement that all the hay equipment's going to this type of coloring. Which, I mean, it makes sense because, you know, for those of you guys who don't know, Case and New Holland are owned by the same company. So they've just had basically for every single product, a lot of them are the exact same color or the exact same iron, just different paint. So it's two different part numbers, two different things you get a stock. You think about all the, how much money it costs to do all that stuff. Getting it down to basically one part instead of two is uh, gonna save a lot of money. Here's the deer booth. We'll make our way over to the case booth too. This is what I wanted to see. The AF11, well, basically identical to the CR11. So it's roped off, you can't get up close, just like the New Holland. Like I said, they just released it. Still probably a lot of things gonna change. That's probably why they don't want folks up close, but you can kind of see, pretty nifty. Looks like a European option. Over in Europe, they have to have a place to actually clean your hands. Looks like just a water bottle underneath the lighter. Pretty sweet. Same 775 horsepower. Tell you what though, this combine does look really nice. I really like the styling. Sweet looking truck. Hey, I know a thing or two about that combine. Surprise deer doesn't, deer has zero combines here at the show. Kind of disappointing, but that is what it is. So at least I get a C and X9 there. Yeah, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, I uh, did a little bit of work on the X9 combine. Man, Kloss really shrunk their footprint here. Looks like they just have a try on. Oh, I know this guy. Oh, hey. Hey, Rob, we're here. Bob, the, the famous, the famous Bob Brown, the only one of the channel. Wow. Yeah, hey, I am, I am honored to finally see you again. Yeah, Holy me. crap. I was actually just coming to look at the actual, the only combine yeah, worth looking yeah. at here yeah. that I run into this yeah. famous guy. The, the worst combines on down there, that black one. I don't, I don't know what they are. Oh. Yeah. You mean, the, you mean the one that uh, has good technology, but it always breaks down? Wheel. Don't have steering wheel. Uh, how can you drive it then? It's got the little sticks. Is, do you drive it like a bot, like a dozer with the uh, with your foot? You just sit right there, and just drive it. Right that sounds way too easy. I don't oh, know if I'd I like know. it. You just take a nap if you want. You'll get a quote from you, Ron. I don't. I, I still don't understand the steering wheel this combine. I might have to come over and drive it for you. John Deere is just jealous. We <laughs> they'll have it next year. Yeah. <laughs> 
So for those of you guys who don't know, the show is kind of broken up into three buildings, the south, north, and west. And to be honest, I'm about halfway through the north building so far, and there's not a lot different at all. It's basically just a lot of small company, small exhibitors, but pretty much uh, identical. That's handy. We have one of those, but not as souped up as that. Nice little skid steer attachments here. And just overall, like I said, nothing too special in the north wing. South wing's where all the big equipment is, though. That's where we'll get some interviews and such. Well, that was fun seeing the, the Browns just randomly. And I was texting Brian. I was like, hey, you here? I'll see you at Salford tonight. But I ended up finding them. Kinsey just came out with a new push row unit. It's kind of cool. They pioneered the push row. When they say push row, it's basically most row units are in the back. They're trailing. Well, they actually have uh, split row units. So every 15 inches, when you're looking this way, your main row unit's in the back. Every 15 inches, you have a pusher unit. So just kind of neat. And fun fact, I almost worked at Kinsey. I had a uh, job offer junior year of college, but just decided to stay with deer even though Kinsey was paying better and offered me a better job. And I don't regret it. It would have been fun, but deer has opened up a lot more places to live and a lot more movement. There's a big old 60 foot head out of Brazil. GTS. Ooh, they came out the six series round baler. That's new. Brand new farm all. This thing looks sweet. Oh, I love the old decal. That's awesome. Alrighty guys, I'm here with Sean with Case IH and we are in front of a sweet looking tractor. I guess Sean, tractor baler, what do we got? What do we got behind well, us? Well, uh, the tractor behind us today is the uh, Farmall 120M. Mm -hmm. uh, we offer that in two different uh, models, a 120M and a 110M. That 120 stands for 120 horsepower. 110 being 110. Makes it easy. It makes it very easy. As you can see also, uh, we, we brought this tractor out uh, back last year with the anniversary of the 100th anniversary yep. of the farm malls. So that's kind of we get back into that heritage wise. For sure. You saw the decals bringing back from that M series. Yeah. Very excited about that. Also seeing when you look at that IH. What he oh yeah, the in, classic. The, the classic side to that. So that's that's definitely where this tractor comes in. Where this tractor has definitely been a, a big plus for us uh, in, in just being able to offer uh, just another tractor-wise line and yeah. series for every person needing different options. Yeah, for sure, because uh, because the Farm All brand is basically your, your lower spec, your, your entry level it's, brand. Yeah, in, in many ways. When you look at, uh, when you come on around, we'll, we'll actually uh, talk about some different things. Uh, as, you, as I definitely, like I said, with that, that 120 Super M and that Case IH Farm All, that, that M1 right there definitely brings back a, a lot of heritage as, as we talk about. More or less like an active drive forward transmission. Uh, why is that? So, so it's definitely a plus. And is this a similar cab as the Maxims or is it a different no, cab? No, this cab is, is definitely not like the Maxim cab. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just going to be more, as I kind of put it into a like a C or a previous U series yep. uh, cab side to yeah, that nature. Sense. Uh, because when we look at that pricing wise, right. so we get into that Maxim cab, then you're going to be into that, that Vestrum yep. uh, series tractor, which is a great tractor too. That's plus. This particular tractor is uh, has uh, three sets of hydraulics, so that's an option with this particular tractor here. Perfect. And I see the baler back out. I'm not sure if this is your expertise as well. well I'm actually the livestock product oh, specialist, well, so let's just count. I'm going to pull the door down just a bit. Oh, you're good. Uh, and, so and just to give you a little bit of a heads up, we actually had a demo a demo with tractor baler automation okay so we're the, actually Great. the channel is pretty familiar Great. with so it you're very familiar with it but i'm just curious any like basically upgrades because i see you got the six series this that's is the six series uh so as we all been aware of you're aware of that's the rb oh the yeah four the four meaning it's four foot wide uh and then here uh being a five so that's five foot, five foot, five diameter. Five foot on the diameter and then the six is a series yep so this is and this is an afs connect uh, so that means that it is uh, can be automation with that. Yep. With this mailer, we offer it in three style configurations, whether it's um, just like you see with the rotor side or, or knives, so we can do a 13 knife system or a 25. Makes sense. So for the bedding, for those guys that need that bedding. But we still have the same uh, 
style load system, stain net style system yep. to that. Uh, and so that that's nothing has changed there. Uh, storage at the top. Um, this particular uh, is is like I said, is a very heavy built. Yeah. As you can see, just by looking at yeah, it. Yeah, you just tell the chains uh, are chains, chains are beefy. All the, the chains, drives. Chains 100, uh, 100 proof chain. Yep. Uh, this particular one show unit has has the uh, oiler. Oh, they, that's pretty. We handy. also uh, have um, have an option for an automatic greaser. Oh, cool. So in that particular one, um, with the grease, uh, we can actually set that uh, on the monitor. So, so wow. we can do that at uh, every 30 minutes all the way up to 180 minutes. As you can see, we've got red bands, uh, so you can able to see that crop. For sure. Uh, come in. And a they, lot. Look, they look cool yeah, with red definitely, bands. Definitely cool inside to that. But we look at the 100 chain, uh, that's a real heavy yeah, big that's, chain. That's thick. I don't want to yeah. touch it because it's yeah, greasy. It's but. Got <laughs> so. Now, what the demo that we had actually had, I believe the Pro 1200, like the, I forget what it's called. That was like the Pro 700 Plus. Or, yeah, Pro 700 Plus. That's so what you, it is. So you actually got to demo that last year. Yes, it was last yeah, fall. So that would have been the Pro 700 Plus. Well, yep. So, uh, so is that an offering with this Baylor? Because I, I really like how that yeah. display that's, was. That's the only uh, monitor I had available at yep. the moment for, for today's show. A lot, of, a lot of cool features that you guys have been adding. A lot, that's for sure. Uh, another storage. I was say, I did notice that. Uh, is that? For, ah. for, the, for the net wrap uh, compared to our 5 Series, so it is on the side. Uh, oh, so, so it's not on it's the back. It's not on the very back like That's, it is on our five series. I like that uh, better. So that is a huge factor and a huge plus, so that you can see that it's here, very easy to load wise. Don't have to worry about a hood slamming down on right. your fingers. Ask me exactly how I know. Right. Exactly. <laughs> thank you very much. Well, thank you, Sean. It was a pleasure. Man, this thing is huge. Sheesh. I wonder how much horsepower this thing takes to run. I got this. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Didn't get a chance to go through the deer booth yet. We'll go through that tomorrow. So this is the south wing. This has a lot of more uh, of equipment. So you guys get a little bit of a taste with the case interview. So we'll see what else we can see tomorrow. But I'm going to go uh, close this video out for today. So we're going to close the day out and we'll catch you guys up tomorrow morning. I think that's so sweet. back to the hotel guys it was a fun night so we will catch you now we'll catch you guys tomorrow see you then good morning everyone welcome to day two of the show let's uh go see what we can see and of course i gotta start off by the combine look at that it's even got two rotors nice let's see if we can get an interview on this thing a little later today So this is always really cool to go out and stop and see. I kind of st put this on the channel before, but I'll do it again because I just love the idea of a seed and spray sprayer. So deer isn't the first one that came out, but they're the first one in a US-based pro uh, manufacturer to make this. Basically what it is, is there's cameras every three feet. You can kind of see all throughout the boom. And essentially as you're going through the field at 15 mile an hour, it is look actively looking for weeds and only putting down herbicide wherever you specifically want. And this sprayer specifically is split in half, so you can have a fungicide and a herbicide. You can spot spray and you can broadcast. So basically you can have, it's essentially like having two spray systems in one. You can kind of see it's got two, uh, two inlets, one smaller, so if you need to spot spray something that's a little bit stronger and that you won't use as much, you can do that versus uh, if you're gonna broadcast like a fungicide or something like that, you can do that as well. And that's basically done because there's two product pumps, there's two lines, there's two hoses, there's two, there's two of everything basically on the sprayer. I'm not a massive fan of that because that adds a lot of cost, but hey, guys are liking it, guys are liking it. So I'm just looking around and seeing what's new with the uh, Ideal Combine. Not a whole lot, they got a lot of the doors are closed up, but this thing's different up front. They have an air blaster. So it's basically uh, compressed air directed out here with slots and it blows off and cleans your feeder house. Also got a tube right there that cleans the feeder house off. Not a bad idea. 
I think that's uh, masking the real problem, which all combines have, which is feeder house air coming out the front of the feeder house. But it's a cool way of uh, masking it. Like I said, guys, I've said this before. I love the technology that's on the Ideal Combine. They just uh, had a lot of issues getting reliability. But with Brian Brown having a combine and Ideal now, interested to see how they like it. All right, guys, we are back here at the case booth with Leo. You guys might recognize him for the video we did in the summer, but uh, we got a little bit uh, different of a machine here right now. So, Leo, what do we got behind us that we yeah. have all this crowd around? Oh, around, you know, behind me is the AF11 combine, right? Class, class 10 plus combine. You take a look at what we're delivering here more capacity, yep. more technology, and more runtime. So, built on those three core principles, but all new redesign from the ground up. So, we stretched the wheelbase on this unit, but it all starts with the header. So, we're showing a C516 cornet on the front. Brand new so cornet like, line? Yeah, brand new cornet line. So, talking about capacity, large auger, cross auger, profile is more flatter to take that high volume crop into that whole new redesigned feeder house. So, when you look at the feeder house, we actually have a synchronized feed system. So, we're feeding that system into the two dual rotors but we're using the actual rotors to actually speed that synchronized feed system. So we're synchronizing those two. So, you know, holding our grain quality, and then we get into that rotor area, History Heritage AFX, so yep. AFX L2. So AFX for mm. our history, L is for longer. So the longer rotor, makes sense. more. Yep, makes, makes sense. Makes sense. And then two, right, dual rotor. Which that, that's a huge, because that's a case IH first, right? Yep. Case IH first, so I'm at class 10 plus. Yep. So if you take a look at our history and heritage, looking at that crop on crop threshing, right? Yeah. Grain on grain, so we're still using that. But then you get into the cleaning system, totally redesigned. So we have an active and dynamic cleaning system. So we used to have three sieves, now we have four main sieves. It allows us to actually shake the cleaning system left or right, depending upon where the crop mm. residue, meaning coming, coming down, down the grain. So now we can start leveling that off and have more efficiency for clean. As a guy who have farms a lot of side hills, that gets me excited because... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah we're going to keep that level all the way through. And uh, then you get down, so there's two now cross augers, or we used to have one, mm -hmm. now two cross augers to come up to the incline, or the elevator, yeah, and over time. up to 10,000 bushel an hour we can push through that. Now the machine won't do that, obviously, meaning, but we're sizing that. Right. And we get up to that 567 bushel green tank. That's massive. That's a, a load at a six bushel per second. On the also rate. massive. <laughs> like I said, you say class 10 plus, and he means it, because that's, that's some pretty thick stuff. Yeah, 100 though. seconds we can get that green tank unloaded. So if you look at where that green cart needs to be, positioning yep. is all about productivity and yep. efficiency. So getting back to the field, right? Makes sense. Makes and sense. we can actually cut that unload rate from six bushels down to three bushels. Oh, for topping it off? For topping it off. So you can. Yeah. I was going to ask you about that because I was wondering if that was a feature because. I mean, six bushels, that's a lot, but when you're going right into a truck on the road or so, that might be a little too much. That is sweet. We're filling up a cart in the corners. Yeah. And then last but not least, getting the residue out the back. So yep. you look at our chopper system, totally redesigned. But the residue system, in fact, behind me, you see a little white little sensor that's called radar spread automation. So from the cab now, you let the radar actually now do the spread with for you. So that's we're awesome. Setting ourselves up for success for next year's crop. Well, exactly. Business, you know, the man. Yeah. Oh yeah, because that's a bigger thing more and more now. Because like you said, residue spread. I mean, your next year's crop starts with this pass. This is the yeah. first pass, so yeah, it's important. Year, right? Exactly. Yeah. So really, the AF11 is built on three core principles: capacity, that technology, and that runtime. You know, last but not least, the technology up in the cab dual Pro 1200 displays. Oh, yes. Yep, so now we've got a view into that machine. So actually now we can see the grain camera image, so I can see cracks, broken, foreign material. Yeah. And now we have additional automation. So we have cleaning automation and residue automation. So really rounding it all out. Man, and that's just building on, like you said, the core principles of the technology you currently have. That's awesome. And I, the spreader automation, that's... I really like that, especially when I think of a, a corn soybean guy. Not a lot of guys care about soybean residue spread, but if you leave a poor spread, to your, to your exact point, your next year's crop is not starting off on a, red, on a good footnote, so that's that's awesome. Don't want to have any yield drag, right? Exactly, exactly. And I don't think you mentioned yet, but what's, the, what's this thing kicking out for horse ponies? 775 horse ponies. Man, that has got to be up there for one of the top in, in any combine market. That is awesome. Yeah. But right. well, that's awesome. Well, Leo, I appreciate you taking the time as always. All right, all right. Looking forward to potentially seeing when these out in the, out in the wild someday. Thanks Whatever. again. Well, guys, I just realized that I have way too much footage for just one video. 
So hey, lucky for you guys, we're gonna split this one up into two right here. So thank you guys so much for watching. As always, take care, take it easy, stay safe, and ta-ta for now.